Tailwind is amazing and it's actually my favorite way to do CSS. That's what I do in all of my projects. But there's a couple of really tricky things with Tailwind that can come back to bite you if you don't fully understand what's going on. So let's take a look at a very basic example. This is an Astro project where I have a button component and then I'm referencing this button component on the index homepage. So if we come and look at this, it's just a regular button that says click me. Great. Now let's say that in your button component, you want to define a class name property as one of your props so that you could customize this to do anything that you want to. So you have a foundational button and then you could go and customize this on top of it. Well, let's say we wanted to try this out and we did something like class name equals and then let's try making a bigger uh, PX. So let's do a PX of 20. Let's see, this actually works. So we can see that this, if we look inside of this element and select the element, look at its classes, you can see that class PX20 is being applied. And then if you scroll down, you can see that its styles are also being applied. But what happens if we do something a little bit different? Um, let's say we do a PX of 10. Well, in this case, you may not be able to tell this, but this is actually not applying PX of 10. And if we look inside of this again, you can see that it actually has the class of PX10, but for some reason, when we scroll down, you see this is being uh, being crossed out. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, the same thing happens if we try to change this text to be text red of 500. Obviously, we would expect this to turn red and it's not happening. Now, again, inside of the classes, you can see that uh, the class is actually there, but if we scroll down to that in the CSS here, Right here, you can see it's being crossed out again. Now, the reason is because of how CSS works and CSS specificity, which is basically going to look at not the order that you define your classes inside of Tailwind. So in this case, you'll have all these classes and then these classes, but that's not how this works. This is based off of how they're listed in terms of order in the root CSS. So we can actually open up if we click on uh, this and then open up the CSS file we can see that we have a text red of 500 and then we have a text blue of 500 and a text blue of 50, for example. So what that means is even though we've applied or added both of these classes for text red 500 and text blue 50, the one that's been defined the most recently in the output CSS, which you don't have visibility to unless you go and look for it, that's the one that's being applied and that's the one that's overriding the other one. Same thing for, I forget if we, I think we did PX10, PX10 is defined before PX4, so PX4 here is gonna win. Now the problem is you don't have any control over how these are ordered in the output CSS, and this is where the Tailwind Merge NPM package come in, comes into play. So Tailwind Merge is meant to handle this exact same situation where you are applying additional classes to an existing set of classes, and what it will do when it has P3 here, for example, it will remove all existing P definitions. So if we look inside of VS Code and we were to type in uh, something like uh, text blue 500, it's actually gonna give us IntelliSense in here to know we've got two properties that are gonna compete with each other. So basically what Tailwind Merge is going to do is handle that competition and override any of these ex existing classes with the classes that are being applied here. So let's set this up and actually see how this works. All right, so let's install this Tailwind Merge package. And then inside of here, we can import TW Merge from that package. And then what we'll do is we'll pass all of these classes into that Tailwind Merge function. So we'll call TW Merge, and then we will pass in all of these classes to here. And then we will pass in a second set of classes, which actually is the class name property. Now, one thing that you can do in here, I'm doing a check to see if class name exists. You can also just give this a default of empty string and then not have to do this check. So that would have simplified this code a little bit to just being that. But in this case, we can reference this variable directly and not have to do the template literal syntax. So we'll need to close that out appropriately. And now we should see that the additional classes that should be overridden are actually being removed. Namely, the text blue should be removed from the output CSS, and then the PX of four should be removed from the output CSS. So let's run this again, and we'll come back to our running application. We'll refresh this, see that our styles are being applied. So we see we have the red there. And then if we go into the console, actually to our elements, 
and select this element again, we can look inside of these classes. We can make this a little bit bigger. And inside of here, I don't see a PX of four, but I do see PX of 10. And then I don't see the text of blue 50, but I do see text red 500. So this is appropriately overriding the existing classes when we add new ones on top. So this is a perfect solution to solve one of the trickiest problems with Tailwind, which is the fact that you don't know how the CSS is actually being generated behind the scenes until you go and look for it. So anyone, anytime you wanna handle overrides, you can use Tailwind Merge to do that. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Astro, I actually have a full course on Astro at astrocourse.dev where we build a fully loaded blog that uses static site generation, server-side rendering, has authentication and comments and all sorts of really fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out at astrocourse.dev. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.